It's like, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? You want to do what's right for the patient. And then when you add that trusted care piece is that we as a system are doing everything we can to make sure it's right. Safety is paramount. When we meet together for our crew briefs before every mission, we do CRM, ORM, and we always say, hey, if you see anything dumb, dangerous, or different, the thing is time out, knock it off, you call it immediately, and that's the same nomenclature that our front end uses. So everybody just stops, you reevaluate what's going on. But it also lines up with another principle of trusted care, which is that duty to speak up. And let's say it's one of the youngest airmen that's on the crew and they notice something, ask. And we encourage that environment, hey, it's not like we're gonna look at you like, why don't you know? It's like, how can I help you? Empower each other. And at the end of the mission, we do our debrief and you go over those things that went well, things that really didn't go so well. And that's a way you can see what can we do to get better. You use him because if that happens out of nowhere, you're gonna have stuff lying around and somebody can get hurt. And so you start thinking about how can we change what we have to make that work. Even just this unit itself, the SLC and the foot, they will innovate and to just kind of step outside the box. I'll kind of roll back to transportation isolation system. Just the development of that alone. Talk about, wow. How do we do it better? How, how do we really make it work? We're always ready. The transportation isolation system, um, the reason why it came by is because back in 2014, with the Ebola outbreak, the president declared it a threat to national security. So what we're doing today with the TIS on the C-17 is we're running a training mission to familiarize our people in our squadron, 375th AES, to be able to work with the TIS in the future in case we need it. So there's 31 AE units Four are active duty, two are CONUS, one in USAFE, one is in PACA, nine are Air National Guard, and the rest are reserve. So we are really a total force. You know, we deploy together, so we need to come with a standardized platform. It's not AE, it's not just your C-17s, it's not just AMC. This is all the different weapon systems in a kind of conflict or if we needed support for a, a humanitarian event, we would be involving other nations. And so Mobility Guardian has been an opportunity for us to test how that works and what it looks like. We can think of it in terms of uh, people, processes, and equipment. So when applied globally, it allows us to extend our reach. And even we have one of the new division chiefs up at headquarters, she was in, she was in a crash and so she ended up breaking her neck. And she remembers, she's like, oh my gosh, you all took such great care of me. And it's like just hearing those stories because we don't always see our patients anymore. So sometimes you're like, wow, I wonder how they did. In my particular case, I was air vac to Bagram that first night where I spent the night there and then I was air evac up to Launch Duel where I received treatment for a broken neck. I wore a halo for three and a half months. 366 days after the crash on the 12th of October of 2016, I actually was medically cleared to fly again. Um, as a navigator and colonel in C-130s, probably limited options to actually go fly, but medical isn't gonna be anything that's gonna hold me back. Just to know that you're getting those people to a safe place and getting them out of that situation is just relieving. Like, it's crazy to see the, the relief on people's faces when they know they're going somewhere safe. What we were all brought up in the military to, with our core values of just excellence in everything we do, having integrity, and just service for self, and that's who we are.